Hello, everybody, and welcome to this evening's webinar. My name is David Merwine. And I'm going to be presenting this evening. Hope everybody's doing well. Get started here in just a few minutes as people filter in. Good evening, everybody that is here and in attendance. There is a Q&A box that you can fill your questions into. There is also a, uh, a chat. So if you guys have any questions <clears throat> or anything pops up during the webinar, feel free to write into the Q&A, write into the chat. Uh, and again, we'll wait a few minutes for folks to go ahead and get started. Uh, or to join rather, and then we'll go ahead and get started, okay? All right, looks like we've got a few people in here, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, let's begin as we always do in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening asking for your guidance, for your wisdom, and for your support. As we begin this meeting, help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of community. Fill us with your grace, Lord God, so that we may make decisions today that will impact our lives and continue to remind us all that all we do here today, all that we accomplish is for the pursuit of truth, the greater glory of you, and for the service of humanity. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Spirit. Amen. All right, everybody. So just a bit of housekeeping before we begin. This evening session is being recorded uh, and you will be able to watch it again. Um, there is a Q&A box again. So if you'd like to enter any questions as we go, there will be uh, time at the end to answer some of those questions. If any of those questions revolve specifically around pricing or availability, we can address those offline. Again, my name is David Merwine. I am the pre-need and family services uh, outreach manager for the Archdiocese of San Francisco Catholic Cemeteries. Um, we oversee seven cemeteries in and around the Bay Area, including Holy Cross in Colma, Holy Cross in Menlo Park, Mount Olivet in San Rafael, Our Lady of the Pillar in Half Moon Bay, St. Anthony Cemetery in Pescadero, St. Mary Magdalene in Bolinas, and Tamales Catholic Cemetery in Tamales. Um, I myself have spent uh, over 17 years in funeral and cemetery service, um, I grew up in San Francisco. I attended St. Elizabeth Catholic School, Archbishop Reardon High School. Um, and today I'm going to be presenting to you on a topic that is very important. Uh, and that topic is planning in advance. And what we're going to discuss today, we're going to go over what the uh, what pre-planning is, okay, what the benefits are, why choosing a Catholic cemetery is important, uh, as well as what and how to pre-plan. So we're going to go over all that today. Expect maybe about a 20 to 30 minute presentation, followed by questions as we go. Okay. So first and foremost, we'll answer the question, what is pre-planning? So pre-planning at its very core is something that we do every day. It's making plans in advance. Things that we pre-plan every day in our day-to-day -day life, birthdays, dinners, weddings, vacations, holidays, um, a night out with our friends. All of these things entail us making plans in advance, uh, and oftentimes um, it's because there are things that we want to do, right? So we're excited to do these things, so we plan for them. Um, End-of-life decisions are, are not exciting, right? They're not something that people are have top of mind, but it is important to remember that everybody will experience at some point in time needing to make these decisions, and it's better to make them sooner than make them later, right? Or having to leave leave things for your family to decide that should have been decided by you. So that's kind of first and foremost. Um, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to start by asking uh, a poll question here. And I can pull that up here. Uh, and I'll go ahead and launch this poll for end of life planning. So I'd like you to answer um, what have you done prepared so far? Okay. Have you made your choices known to family? Have you prepared a will, prepared a trust? 
funeral arrangements, cemetery arrangements. Have you done all of the above? Have you done none of the above? I just like to kind of get a gauge for what everybody has done and what they haven't done. So you should see a poll pop up on your screen here. I'll give another 15, 20 seconds for people to answer um, that question. But it is important to think about um, because, again, those end-of-life decisions should be no different. And a lot of times people will prepare a trust. They'll prepare a will. They'll do a power of attorney, medical decisions. A lot of that, however, is not made until last minute. So I see some answers coming through. Some of you prepared a will. Some have prepared a trust. Some have done cemetery arrangements. Some have done funeral arrangements. That's fantastic. Hear all of that. Um, I'll go ahead and close the poll now. That's all great information. So again, funeral services, cremation services, burial arrangement, all of that should be included in your pre need arrangements. So if you're going for a cremation, you want to make sure cremation's included. You'll want to talk to a funeral director. You also want to talk to um, a cemetery advisor in order to make sure your cemetery arrangements are, are taken care of. But in the broadest term, pre-planning is, again, the action of planning in advance. Okay. So the next thing we're going to cover is what are the benefits of pre-planning? So pre-planning arrangements, again, are those that are planned or purchased prior to death, often years or decades before the need arises. Okay. Um, a large percentage of all purposes of burial space in Catholic cemeteries are made prior to the death of the departed, okay? These advanced arrangements oftentimes represent thoughtful, proactive uh, planning, and they also represent economic sense. So making these difficult decisions regarding the burial now relieves family members' stress from evaluating complicated options during a period of stress, during a period of grief, um, you know, we want people to be of their clearest minds when they're making these decisions. And oftentimes when things are unplanned, it can cause additional stress on the family, take time away that they should be spending praying, grieving, being together um, in order to spend hours and hours at these different appointments. So the first benefit uh, is peace of mind. So when we're talking about end of life, um, some of these quotes that you see on my screen are things that I hear. Uh, in my day-to-day -day life and people that know me and talk to me as a funeral professional, um, you know, I'll be gone. I don't care what happens to me. You know, I'll let my wife and kids deal with that. Um, just cremate me and keep my urn on the mantle. Um, that's what life insurance is for. All of these are just kind of excuses. So it's really not a secret that end of life can be a difficult topic of discussion. Uh, so whether you're discussing your own or someone else's end of life decisions, uh, the, the the discussion still remains difficult. However, it's very, very important to note that this is a topic of discussion to be had by everyone at one point or another, okay? The last thing that anybody wants their family to go through is additional stress during an already stressful time, okay? Planning in advance alleviates your family from future stress, such as financial stresses, which we will discuss, but also from the stress of making several quick decisions while grieving, right? So you're Without planning in advance, you're asking your family to make several decisions, several very expensive decisions in a very short span of time, typically within days. You're going to go to the funeral home and spend a couple hours there. You're going to go to the cemetery and spend a couple hours there. Maybe you don't have access to all the people that need to be there for the decision, so it potentially delays things from happening. So pre-planning allows all of these arrangements to be already agreed upon by all of those who need to be involved during a time of calm and rational decision-making, which assures everyone's satisfaction, including, and most importantly, the deceased, right? I've made my own arrangements. I have taken care of and given instructions for what I desire. I have fully funded it and paid for it. Nobody has anything to worry about. We know this is what David wanted, right? So that's kind of A1. So that peace of mind is right up there with, I would say, the financial savings that come along with pre-planning because you don't need to worry about these several split-minute decisions, possible disagreements between family members, additional stress. Um, it all adds up and it all compounds and piles on on top of one another. Um, not to mention the amount of time, like I said, that's involved making decisions. Planning in advance alleviates several required appointments with the funeral home and cemetery Time, again, that can be spent instead with family uh, in support, prayer, and reverence as we are called to do as Catholics. So very important. And uh, and as it says on, on the slide there, while we think it's the easy route to 
speak about end of life this way, it's not the best when it comes to relieving stress. Um, and it does not fall in line with our Catholic teachings. Okay. The next benefit is your preferred burial location. I know this might sound funny, but when people are considering a resting place, the first thing that they oftentimes think about is they want to be near family members. I want to be near mom and dad. I want to be near grandma and grandpa. Um, so most of us, not only that, want to be near family members, but we also want to have a say of what happens to us, right? For many people, choosing the location means having a say in what happens after they die, okay? So planning in advance not only ensures a higher probability of availability near family members, but it also affords a unique opportunity to ensure that your next of kin and future generations all have a place to be together. So previously, many decades ago, it was common practice for somebody to purchase a family plot, okay, with multiple graves, that's for themselves and for future generations. That is not typically the trend that we see today. The trend we see today is husband and wife, maybe husband and wife and adult children are considered in the decision. Um, but we've gotten away a little bit from the family plot scenario. But I think that we'll see in the very near future with 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 COVID and everything bringing us closer together as people. I really think that family plots are going to be making kind of a resurgence in the preferred way of burial, because not only are you taking care of yourself, you're talking about multi-generational family togetherness. You know, the Smith plot, right, for the Smith family, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, their children and their children afterwards and potentially even their children afterwards. So. We're talking about multi-generations being together in for eternity, okay? So it's a wonderful way to ensure your family's taken care of, a wonderful way to ensure that there's family togetherness. All else fails. Husband and wife, grave, uh, still absolutely appropriate and absolutely encouraged, but something to think about as we talk about, you know, family togetherness, okay? Uh, and lastly, but certainly not least, and probably at the top of most people's list, it's it's up there on mine as well, again, with peace of mind. Um, as we've explored so far, pre-planned arrangements afford peace of mind. Um, you can ultimately say that pre-need arrangements represent the most responsible and effective means of assuring that you and your loved ones' burial requests and wishes after your death are fulfilled, okay? So... The biggest benefit for a lot of people, as I said, is simply the cost savings, okay, when it comes to financial incentives. Um, historically, burial and funeral costs, they increase annually, just like everything else. So because of this and other factors, pre-need arrangements represent significant financial savings. If you're pre-needing today versus 20 years from now, thousands of dollars guaranteed. There's a difference, right? You're saving thousands of dollars, right? Depending upon the funeral home, the crematory, or the cemetery, you can prepay for some or all of the services they offer. I'll get into more of what you can do at Holy Cross. Um, but in doing so, you uh, there are most instances there are enough to cover the cost of any future services. So without getting too deep into it, most funeral homes are putting your money into some type of funeral insurance or some other type of financial vehicle that's going to gain interest over time and potentially cover all the rising costs. Now, it's different at Holy Cross. And again, I'll go into that uh, in more in depth a little bit later. But depending upon what organization you're pre-planning with, there may be certain items that you can pay for and some that you can't, um, all of which should be disclosed to you. So no matter who you're talking to, you always want to make sure that what costs are required, what can I pay for now, and what will I be, what will my family be responsible for in the future? Very important to, to outline all of that. OK, um, again, we'll explore that further later with what you can do with us at Holy Cross. Um, but it is an important discussion to have. Um, and because we're with the archdiocese and our Catholic cemeteries, um, it means you're not facing any rise in costs if all necessary items are purchased. Again, more details to come on that. Um, it is uh, another excuse me. The next item on the financial incentives is going to be preserving life insurance. OK. I know this sounds silly. Oftentimes families come to us saying, hey, do you accept life insurance as a form of payment? We do accept insurance as a form of payment. But um, when the default line of thinking is life insurance is for death expenses, that's not the case. The purpose of life insurance is to help the living who are left behind with a potential financial gap from losing the deceased in their family. If I died tomorrow, 
my life insurance is to make sure that my wife and my kids have financial help without me, right? So that's the purpose of life insurance. It's for the living. It's for the life, the, for life for the people that have been left behind, okay? Um, if you prearrange cemetery services, any portion, again, pre-planning in 20 years or paying a, a, an at-need funeral in 20, 30 years um, is thousands of dollars more expensive. So you're saving thousands of dollars um, today, but also you're saving that life insurance. So any portion of that money, let's say it's $20,000 uh, in, in, in 10 years for me, for a single plot burial, I've not pre-planned anything, $20,000 just at the cemetery, that would have to come out of life insurance, right? Or another way, or another financial means to pay for, uh, which brings me to my last point, which is payments over time. So the inability to make payments in an at-need situation where there's not been anything pre-planned means that all that money is going to be due up front. For 99.9% .9 of cemeteries and funeral homes, if you die tomorrow and there's nothing pre-planned, you are oh, you have to pay everything up front before any services can be rendered. Okay. So that's an important piece. So pre-planning allows you to make payments over time. Okay. Um, for those who do not pre-plan, -pre um, unfortunately, these expenses often arrive at the least appropriate or affordable times. It's just kind of the way that the, the universe tends to work. Um Again, pre-planning allows for interest-free budgeted payments uh, that you can sit down and look at your finances and say, okay, this is what I can afford monthly. What can I do with that? What can I, there's always something you can do, whether it's just acquiring the location, whether you've already acquired a location and now you want to prepay the labor, the opening and closing and the recordation and things like that. All of that can be budgeted and taken care of um, in, in a timely budgeted month to month payment plan. Um, it saves the uh, high interest credit cards. It saves, um, again, a taking from someone's life insurance. It just makes the most financial sense. It's savings, it's preserving life insurance, it's making payments over time. So in summary, it's the most cost-effective and inexpensive way to pay for you and your family members' final expenses. Plain and simple, okay? Next, we're gonna talk about why as Catholics we choose a Catholic cemetery. I'll keep this part pretty brief. Um, as Catholics, it is our duty okay, to express the link of community between the faithful living and the dead, the communion of saints, as the Catholic Cemetery Conference states. Okay, um, Catholic cemeteries are um, consecrated burial grounds, um, which, which is what is required and which is our duty as Catholics for the burial to take place in. Um, the church advocates for Catholic cemeteries because um, as paraphrased in Romans 14, 8, 14, 8, excuse me, both in life and in death, we belong to the Lord. Okay. So just as the faithful have shared and celebrated in the community of the church, so too in death do our bodies rest with other deceased members of our Catholic community. Okay. We are awaiting the day for God to raise our mortal bodies in glory. That is the purpose of Catholic cemetery. So that means if, even if you're cremated, right, the instructions are, and our guidance is, and the guidance that of the Catholic Church is to have those remains brought to a cemetery, buried in a family grave, in a family crypt, uh, in its own niche, in a in a, in a, a family columbarium, whatever options there are for niches at your local Catholic cemetery. Um, it's important to know that cremation is not the end, okay? Catholics believe in life, even in death. So there still needs to be placement in a Catholic cemetery, um, and as more people are choosing cremation, it's important to remember that the church has allowed cremation since 1963 for those who choose it in good faith, uh, but the church does not allow for scattering of remains, keeping cremated remains at home as we've, as we've discussed, right? So that is not within the guidance and the guidelines of what we're advocating for. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about what can you pre-plan at Holy Cross. So this is very important. If you've not pre-planned yet, if you've not made your arrangements with the cemetery, this is where you're going to want to kind of dig in and pay a little bit of attention to what you can pre-plan. Okay. So the categories of pre-planning items here at Holy Cross and our cemetery. So again, there's seven cemeteries within the Archdiocese of San Francisco. Um, first and foremost, you can pre-plan the location. So you can purchase in advance burial rights 
to a grave, a crypt, a niche, a family plot, a private room in the mausoleum, a family columbarium, a single grave, a double depth grave, whatever you end up purchasing, that's all available to be paid for in advance and pre-planned. Again, monthly payments are very welcome and, and can be uh, can be arranged, okay? Always at 0% interest, okay? Your endowment care. So the endowment care is a one-time contribution towards the cemetery's perpetual maintenance and care fund. There's no annual fees. There's no additional charges when it comes to that. It purely and simply is the perpetual care of the cemetery for the future, okay? The recordation fee is our paperwork and record keeping fee that can be prepaid. The interment fees, labor to open and close the grave, um, that is all something that can be prepaid. Burial boxes and burial vaults, if you're having an in-ground burial, right? So um, burial boxes and burial vaults, the intention is to help protect the earth above the burial, right? We want to make sure the earth is safe, secure, remains flat. If you've ever seen an older cemetery um, where you see the headstones are kind of all doing this and it's old, um, it's doing that because the earth moves, right? The earth shifts, the earth Earth is a living, uh, is a living thing. And so um, the burial boxes and burial vaults help keep the ground safe. So in those cemeteries where you see headstones kind of doing this, they're not using a burial boxes or burial vaults, right? And again, this is technology that's newer. Um, so more modern cemeteries are going to have requirements for the burial boxes and burial vaults. So for an in-ground burial, those are required at Holy Cross and our cemeteries, um, but they can be prepaid, right? You can pay for them in advance. And then last but certainly not least, memorialization options, right? Inscriptions on crypts, monuments, uh, headstones, all of that can be prepaid, including things like urns, right? If we want urns for the niches that we're uh, placing family members in for the cremated remains, that can all be prepaid and paid in advance, saving you thousands of dollars, saving your family uh, time, heartache, having to make these decisions uh, and not knowing um, maybe what you wanted even. Maybe that discussion never happened, right? Uh, a lot of times it doesn't get a chance to happen because a lot of times when death is unexpected like that, um, it's not something that's been discussed because we have such a phobia of talking about it. Um, but it's important that we open up the discussion to understanding that death is a part of life, especially as Catholics. There's no fear, right? We are We are promised eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that means that we should have no fear. Life is a, death is a part of life, right? It's not the end. So pre-planning, these are all the items that you can pre-plan and, uh, and um, pre-pay for um, at Holy Cross. You can do it all at once. You can do them in segments. Um, we will, our family service advisors will guide you in the best ways uh, to manage that for yourself, for your budget, for what you're expecting to pay. Okay. Which brings me on to my next point. How can I start? So a lot of you, when you answer the poll, um, you said that you had already started, which is great. You have trust, you have a will, you've done some funeral arranging, some cemetery arranging. How you can start here with us at Holy Cross, you can do several things. First and foremost, you can always call our main office at 650-756-2060. Ask to speak to a family services advisor. The receptionist will make sure that you get to the right person who can help you get your questions answered, okay? We also have an online pre-planning form at holycrosscemeteries.com under our pre-plan tab. It is a fantastic resource, a bevy of information there for you in order to find and see anything that you might need, okay? So you have um, the uh, checklist, you have um, the benefits, you have all the information kind of condensed there for you and very easy to understand and very easy to read information, okay? Um, you can always email us more info at holycrosscemeteries.com to express your interest. There's other forms and things you can fill out on the website requesting a pre-planning guide, things of that nature, all available to you. Um, you can also respond yes to this poll that I'm going to uh, pop up here. So I'm going to run this poll. Anybody that responds yes will be emailed information, okay? Um, we'll go ahead and launch this. Go ahead and say yes if you like more information. No, if you do not, that's totally okay. Um, and then which cemetery you would like it for. I'll leave this up for about 30 seconds while everybody gets a chance to respond. Um, as you're doing this, Please remember that events like this are very important to family education and they're important to us to make sure everybody gets an opportunity to learn about um, pre-planning and what the benefits are. So if you'd like to receive updates on things like today, masses, services, important cemetery news, 
please text the word cemetery, C-E-M-E-T-E-R-Y, to 84576. You will be enrolled in our newsletter. You'll get updates. You'll get invitations to events like today. Um, we also do a lot of live in-person events. We do lunch and learns, um, and we also are having uh, in April an open house. So I'd like to invite everybody that's joining this evening to our open house on Saturday, April 20th um, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We are having an open house at Holy Cross in Colma. Um, all you have to do is show up uh, between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. and you will have an opportunity to meet with a family service advisor, speak with a member of management, a member of staff, um, and they will be able to answer any and all of your questions um, in regards to pre-planning. So it's a great opportunity to come, low pressure, come see the cemetery, get some information, take home some pricing, and start talking about planning your legacy at that event, okay? Um, again, I'm David Merwin. I wanna thank everybody for joining. Um, if anybody has any questions, I haven't seen anything come through the Q&A or the webinar chat, so I'm gonna assume there aren't any questions. I just wanna thank everybody for your time this evening. Um, we're wrapping this up here, um, and um, I just like to kind of close with a prayer, if I may, so in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. I'd like to thank you, Lord, for your presence with us this evening. As we depart from this space now, please keep us safe as we journey through the remainders of our day. Amen. So thank you, everybody. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for joining again. I'm David Merwine. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, you can also reach me uh, directly as well. Um, if you call the office, they'll connect you with me um, and make sure that uh, you get any of your questions answered. So Again, everybody, thank you. Have a lovely evening. Um, if you haven't had dinner yet, hopefully have a lovely dinner. If you have already, please enjoy the rest of your evening. And again, thank you for joining, everybody. Bye-bye now. God bless.